Um, there is a scientific worldview in the popular sense, uh, and as you probably know, it's called scientism, and it's more or less positivism, which is that the only valid knowledge is scientific knowledge. Um, this, is not a, this is not a view that's held universally by scientists, I, I, I must stress. Um, the interpretation of science and the practice of science are two different things. Um, but there is this view. I suppose, as someone who used to be a physicist, I can testify that it's, it can sometimes be a problem if you spend all your life doing physics. So um, uh, I spent years and years measuring things, writing computer software, um, uh, working out equations, making calculations. And of course, if you do this all day long, it's very easy to think the whole world is one giant computer, okay? <laughs> because we can't help it. You know, the, 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 the habits of, of daily life, the habits of intellectual practice affect the way that we see the world. So um, there is a sort of scientific worldview that comes about through habitually doing nothing but science all day long. And, and I think, therefore, a good scientist should try to do some other things besides science in the strict sense of philosophy, humanities, and so on. Um, otherwise, I think in the end, he or she will not be such a good scientist. We've got to ask, what does success look like for a scientist? If you open a physics book, uh, what you see are equations and numbers. So if you believe that the whole of reality is equations and numbers, Maybe science will eventually tell us everything about nature. But personally, I don't believe si um, uh, everything about nature is things you can measure. Um, in fact, most of the things that are important for human beings are not things you can measure, like friendship, or love, or joy, or the passions, or music, or art, or architecture, aesthetics, beauty. Um, I mean, if everything was a simultaneous equation, it would be, it'd be a very boring life, okay? Um, so um, what science, science is very good at doing science, um, but it, there are lots of things it doesn't do very well, and that's why we need other, we need other fields as well. If science could explain everything, I think it would be a rather sad world, because, because, if, if, because science, science as we understand it in terms of quantitative measurements um, and making up scientific laws and discovering scientific laws and so on, uh, I, think, I think life is richer than this. But Shakespeare knew this, many centuries ago, because at the beginning of Hamlet, the play Hamlet, there's a famous line, there were more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than dreamt of in your philosophy. And I think that the world is bigger than our theories. Uh, and, I ha and that's good, that's a wonderful thing. In interestingly, there's, um, uh, for, for many years we've tried to create an artificial machine which is based on the idea that everything about life that's important can be represented by a number, artificial intelligence. It's interesting, this program has largely failed um, because it's proven very, very difficult to um, code even everyday things about human life and intelligence. So it's very, very difficult to turn these things into numbers. So I think there's, there's some empirical evidence that you know, when you try to think about the world just in those terms, uh, you risk not only um, uh, failing to understand the world properly, but also wasting a lot of time and money in the in wrong kinds of research.